Hey pilots, Drain Man here and today I got a very special video. In today's video we are going to build a monster drone. This is also known as X-Class and they're just freaking huge. These things are huge. I mean look at this. It hardly fits on screen. It's about as big as I am. And your typical five inch drone is about five inches in length. This is 800 millimeters. From end to end, this drone is nearly two and a half feet. It's uh, 31 and a half inches to be exact. And the thing is monstrous. It's probably gonna weigh somewhere towards eight to 10 pounds. Who knows, we'll weigh it when we get there. But this thing is huge. And in this video, I'm gonna walk you guys through building this thing step by step by step. We're gonna just have a blast. I'm sure it's not all gonna fit in one video and that's okay. We'll make several videos and we will get a whole playlist going to get this thing built and ready. That way if you decide you wanna build one, you'll have a guideline to follow. You'll be able to help yourself pick parts and you'll be able to know how to put things together and you kinda just use your own creativity and and let, let your imagination run wild. Now on this one here, I have specifically chosen to run 12S. If you're familiar with LiPos, then you know that when we get into five inches, about as big as we go is about 6S. So this is literally double the voltage, double the cells. This thing is gonna be fast and it is going to be powerful. And it is also gonna be dangerous. So if you are gonna build one of these, make sure that you follow all the safety precautions and don't do anything stupid because they're dangerous. Oh, oh. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is I wanna go over the frame just a little bit. The frame is not 100% complete. And what that means is I have not put the feet on there's these feet plates right here. This is the plate in which the motors will mount on. These motors will mount on these plates just like this. And then this will mount onto the foot of the arm. And then I have a arm brace that's gonna go across on the front and the back. This is the Cannonball 800 frame and you can get it without the braces. You don't have to get the braces. I chose to get them, it was a little bit more money, but if it makes the drone any stronger and more resilient to crashes, I'm gonna want it. Especially because the price tag on this thing is, is up there, all right? I do wanna take a moment to show you the difference in propellers. This is a full-size quadcopter propeller. This is what we put on our five inch drones. This is what's going to be put on this drone. To help you see the difference, this thing is so big I can't even get any space, but look at the difference in size from one propeller to the next. I'm going to also show you a regular size motor. This is a 2306, so for a five inch quadcopter, it's still a pretty big motor because some pilots run 2207 or 2206. This here is a 2203, and this is this X-Class Monster motor. If that doesn't give you any insinuation of the difference in size, I don't know what will. A couple things I wanna go over too before we dive into the build, because if you're interested in building, you are going to wanna know these things as well, and that is the electronics. So, after you've decided amount of cells that you want to run through your X class build, or maybe you're building a beast class. And if you are, and if you're not familiar with beast class, it's pretty much the same thing, just a lot smaller. I think they range around 500 millimeters, somewhere around there. I'll put a correction on the screen if need be. And the beast class still requires all of these special components and wiring and things to be very specific. I have those special electronics here. This is them and they do get very, very expensive. So a typical ESC can range anywhere from $10 to $25 at max. These ESCs here are somewhere around $100 a piece. All right, so these are bubble wrapped in a special wrapping that helps keep the static from any type of electrical shock happening. And you should be careful when handling electronics of this magnitude. That's quite a word, right? Magnitude. All right, this ESC is big. Look at that. Look at the size of the MOSFETs on there. 
and it does come with a capacitor. This is a 330 microfarad 50 volt capacitor. And that lets you know we're gonna be running somewhere around 50 volts through this thing. So this ESC here is the 120 F3, and the F3, when you're thinking of F3, your first thought is flight controller. An F3 microcontroller on a flight controller would be a very bad thing. But when you're talking about the microcontrollers for ESCs, F3 is actually very advanced. It's a very fast computing microcontroller, and it does its job. Now, 120 on here is talking about the amperage. This is a 120 amp ESE. It can handle every bit of power that is gonna be running through this machine. You still need to be careful, but it can handle it. It also can take up to a 200 amp burst, which we might just pull off. So that is our ESC. We are gonna have four of these mounted on each arm to supply each motor. It is a speed controller. Now we are going to dive into the Mac Daddy. And what is that? That is this 500 amp PDB. And what's a PDB? It is a power distribution board. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna allow the voltage from the batteries to come up to the power distribution board and be dispersed out to where it needs to go. And it's got regulators and everything like that on it so we can send the correct voltage to our flight controller, the correct voltage to our camera, the correct voltage to our receiver, our VTX, so on and so forth. So this part is one of the most important parts of your entire build. If you screw this part up, you will probably not be able to fly your monster machine. Real quick, I wanted to take a second, before we get too far into the PDB, I wanna show you this here. This is a typical ESE, and this is this drone's ESE. I'm not sure if you can see that, but it is quite a difference in size. So be careful when pulling this out. You don't wanna shock it. All right. There she is. That is what 500 amps of power looks like. Whoo! That is gorgeous. All right, so if we dive into this PDB, you'll see here where we've got four different spots around each corner to connect our ESCs up. And then you've got your ground and power connection on each side. So you can feed voltage in from this way or this way, or if you really wanted to, you can split it in half, which is what I'm gonna do to kind of evenly distribute the power that's coming into the board. I'd rather not put a huge load on one side when I can separate it into two. And then you've got these little pads here. I'm not sure if you can see those, but these little pads are what is going to send out the other voltage on top of other things like telemetry. So we have different regulators on here. We have options for 12 volt and we have options for five volt, three volt. All right, and then we also have our telemetry pad right here and that is where the telemetry is going to come in from the ESCs and head into the PDB and be able to go back to the flight controller and see what's going on with everything and make sure our ESCs are doing well. Now, talking about the ESCs real quick, before we go too far ahead, these ESCs are not your average ESCs. Normal ESCs or common ESCs that we use in this hobby use BL Heli Suite or BL Heli 32. That means we can just plug them right into the computer, we can pull them up on that configurator, we can reverse our motors, we can change our timing, our frequencies, we can do all kinds of things to whereas with this one, you're not able to do that so easily because this does not operate with BL Heli. I did choose APD for a reason, and that is the brand of this ESC. It stands for Advanced Power Drives, and I chose that because they do have their own firmware, and we can use it, and we can flash these. And if you guys don't know how to flash these and you're curious in it, I can make a video on it. Just let me know down in the comments. You will need an FDTI adapter, which I have one here. If you're not familiar with these, I can show you how to use it, and you can use this and their firmware, and you can flash this thing in about 15 seconds. It's super simple. I'm gonna put that back because these are new, so our firmware is probably up to date, and unless I have any issues, I have no reason to touch the firmware on here. We're just gonna get right into building this thing. All right, one of the last things to talk about before we get actually going and actually putting this together is going to be our batteries. and. 
These are our batteries here and they are huge and they are heavy. I have some out of the box here. I've got two more. I wanted to have at least two sets so that way when I come down I can be charging to go back up. And these batteries are really, really big. I'm gonna show you a typical size and this is the, a normal battery. It is literally double if not bigger in size and the reason why is because we have twice the milliamp hour in here. This is a six cell battery and this is also a six cell battery. You can see your cells there. Just this one has a lot more milliamp hour in it and it's going to last a lot longer. But with the amount of amperage we're gonna be pulling, we are probably gonna use it and probably, and, and, and also we are stacking these. We are gonna be running two of these in series which means we are going to have the same amount of milliamp hour but we are going to have double the voltage and we could wire these in parallel where we would have the same voltage that's here which is just a regular six cell which is somewhere around 25.2 but we would have 66 milliamp hour and i'm not going to run it that way i'd rather have a shorter flight but be a lot faster so i have designed this craft to run in series which is going to be 12s 3300 milliamp hour now the very cool thing about this frame is it does hold the batteries inside there is a battery plate here that actually slides out you mount these batteries onto the plate and it slides on the inside of here just like this it is actually, see if you could see that, it's not, it is not going to be strapped to the bottom or strapped to the top where the batteries are exposed to danger or crashes or, or anything else. So these batteries should last a long time because they're gonna be protected and they are very, very expensive. These batteries are, are overpriced if you ask me. So now that we've gone over that, I will show you guys how to wire these in a manner that allows us to make them in series, not in parallel, along with special connectors that have to be used when you're building a drone like this. And I did order some, and I will put a link for all of this stuff. If you're interested in doing something like this, the links are down in the video description. All right, and last but not least, I wanna give a shout out to Neil over at Catalyst Machine Works. Uh, this is his design and his frame, and I put it together, I followed his video. I did not make a video on building the frame because he's already done that. It's about an hour long, it's very detailed. He shows you how to put everything together, and he even tells you why and it all just went together great. And I, I think it's the most gorgeous X-Class frame. It was hard to get, but I fought to get this exact one. I didn't want to build that other one or any of the other ones. I really didn't like the look of them. Plus, if you didn't know, this entire canopy is actually mounted with 3D printed parts. So it's, it's technically kind of soft mounted. And then if we pull this pin, it actually peels open and we can get to all of our electronics, which makes it really, really cool. So you will get to see all that during this build process. So let's go ahead and dive in. Oh, here. 